Hello everyone. Welcome to webinar series on FPG. So we are from Digitronics Nepal and Logitronics. I'm here, Krishna Gaidi. So I'm the host of this session, and I will also lead some part of the session. And basically, we have computer vision and machine learning with FPG session in today's session. So uh, I also have the presenter. Uh, from Digitronics Nepal, uh, we have Avidan Janthapa. So he will lead the computer vision uh, development, application development session with FPGA. And uh, I'm talking about these sessions. Actually, these sessions is the outcome of our few years of expertise or the uh, work done, which we have already uh, did with FPGA. So this is like the educational content session so we don't have any like uh, formal uh, uh, relationship with the uh, vendors FEJ vendors and the third parties so this is just the educational so you guys can learn on and you guys can get the idea about some uh, algorithms and methods of computer visions along with machine learning uh, trends and the applications and the basically options so this is all on the background. So uh, we have the contribution session. In contribution, we are going to talk about the different methods and what is the overall design flow of contribution application. And this session is basically focused on Xilinx space FPGA. And we will also tell you something about the ultra base FPGA. Actually, ultra is acquired by Intel, so we can term it Intel Altera. So um, you do not, you do not uh, mind hope, hope so. So this session is mainly focused on silence based tools and FPGAs. And uh, I think we can now start with the main session, contribution and uh, machine learning. So I will hand over to Abhidhan Chantapa. He will lead the contribution application development with FPG. So Abhidhan, you can start on. Thank you, Krishna, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Abhidhan Thapa. And today I'm uh, going to discuss about use of uh, Vivado HLS for computer vision applications. As you can see here in our table of contents, these are the topics that we'll be discussing on about today. Uh, first, I will uh, show about uh, designing a HLS IP, specifically using uh, computer vision libraries. Then we'll see about video pipeline design and IPs related to it, like access stream to video out, access stream to video in, and test pattern generator and VDMA. So, Vivado HLS is a high-level synthesis tool which comes bundled with Vivado Design Suite. C and C++ are its target language, and it generates VSGL, Verilog, or System C from these C, C++ designs. HLS process provides us flexibility to create different variations of hardware implementations and uh, makes it easier to find the best architecture. Some of the uh, advantages of HLS are faster time to market. Using HLS, we can bring our system to market faster compared to uh, similar uh, VHDL or Verilog designs. Systems uh, developed in uh, HLS are also easier to debug and maintain. When we get into larger complex designs, it gets more difficult to maintain code base in HDL language, which is not so difficult in HLS. So this is a general uh, flow of HLS. We design system in uh, C, C++ with uh, required constraints. Then Vivaro HLS synthesizes our design into RTL design, that is uh, in uh, SGL language, like VSDL, Verilog. Finally, then we can export it to IPX format or to system generator. And also we can integrate our IP in Vivado IP integrator. So let's talk about OpenCV. When computer vision comes into mind, OpenCV is an industry standard. It is an open source library with many, many functions for computer vision applications. Vivaro HLS supports accelerated OpenCV libraries specifically targeted to FPGAs. These are some of the uh, libraries included with Vivaro HLS. Our main focus will be on HLS string. It provides us with the interfaces uh, to interface the, uh, with uh, streaming data. And uh, other is HLS video. HLS video contains specifically towards image and video processing. Here we can see 
XC uh, video to CV mat and CV mat to XC video. These uh, functions, which are highlighted in red, are uh, the functions that help us to convert XC format data into the mat format data. Also, there are uh, different image processing functions like dilate, duplicate, uh, filter, Gaussian blur, etc. And our in this design, we're going to focus on uh, Sobel algorithm, how we can implement in our video processing pipeline. So, so well is detection with HLS. As you can see on the left, there is the image, and on the right, uh, the edge detected image using a uh, Sobel hardware core. You can also find an application Note 890 from Xilinx, which is similar uh, to this. And uh, this is uh, the Sobel function template. Uh, when we use uh, it, is in the uh, HLS namespace, it takes two parameters. Uh, source for the input image, destination for the output image. It computes the horizontal and vertical uh, derivatives estimation to calculate the edges. And uh, so when we are going to use uh, Vivardo HLS video library, we need to include two header files. One is HLS video.h and another is HLS opencv.h. Uh, using this, we can also uh, use uh, uh, namespace HLS when we call these OpenCV library functions. For more, you can also see user guide 902 and the application note uh, 1167. So this is the basic HLS design flow for uh, Sobel edge detection. First, uh, we're going to take uh, XE format uh, data into the RGB image stream. Then we're going to process uh, grayscaling on it. Then we will uh, Gaussian blur noise reduction function. And after that, gradients of X and Y direction will be calculated using Sobel filter. This Sobel filter function is already available. We just have to call it. And finally, the RGB image is again converted into the XC stream to display on the output. So this is the uh, basic diagram. You can see live video input is uh, taken uh, and XC video to mat will convert it uh, to mat format, which is suitable for our uh, video processing. And after processing, we'll again convert it into XC format using mat to xc and then we'll output it. So this is uh, our basic code that we are going to write. On the left side, we can see the header file, uh, hlsvideo.h, uh, and we are going to include a uh, type tip, uh, apxcu. So this is our uh, streaming interface which is of 24 bit. And uh, then uh, we're going to call edge detection function. And on the right side, you can see the edge detection function. This is the main functions uh, that is going to process our uh, image and uh, use Sovel, uh, detection, Sovel edge detection function on it. You can see here, the edge detection contains two parameters. One is for streaming in and one is for streaming out. And we have also defined rows and columns. One thing we need to know in FPGA is it has a limited resource. It cannot dynamically allocate the, the space required for the processing. So we have to determine and calculate uh, in advance how many uh, frame buffers we're going to require, how much space is required to process, and how many stages uh, we'll process in uh, for that image. So as you can see, we have image zero, image one, image two, and image three. So there are four processes and each step has a different space allocated for the uh, image. First, we're going to take XC video to mat, uh, which will convert XC streaming uh, data to mat. We have taken stream in. From stream in, we have uh, saved it into image zero. Then again, from image zero to image one, here we have done a conversion of the color from RGB to gray, and uh, we're going to process in grayscale. So then we have applied Sobel function, Sobel function here, and its uh, coronal size is three by three. And again, we have a uh, process from image one to image two. And then we again convert the color space back to RGB from gray, and we output using mat to exit video. So this is the test bench uh, that we can use to simulate our our uh, your hls designs uh, it is very simple uh, we just allocate the maximum height and width uh, as row and column of the image 
then we read the image using uh, CV functions. One of the advantages is uh, HLS supports open CV functions in the test bench. So we can use uh, CV namespace image read to read the image. Then we have def defined two stream in and stream out variables, which are of uh, XE type. Then we, uh, we have uh, passed the uh, CV mat format image to XE format using CV mat to XE video for function. And then we have called edge detection function, which is our main uh, edge detection uh, HLS IP, uh, which outputs to stream out. And then we again convert from XE video to CV mat so that we can display it uh, on our computer so the image uh, so, that we so get basically uh, avidan is sharing about how we can write the algorithm in hls how we can create the test benches like is the vhdl or vlog test benches so test benches is utilized for like for the simulations and hls also allowed to do the rtl co simulation actually rtl co simulation open with vivado main tool so vivado simulator so that can also utilize for debugging and uh, verification of your design HLS algorithm. And meantime, this HLS based test pens is quite easier to write and easier to like uh, identify the results and verify the design because HLS test pens can read the real time input image and can show the output image in real time just after the processing. So this is quite easy to implement on and simulate the design and verify the design. So, uh, so I think we can go to the next slide. Yes, sir. So this is the, our uh, exported uh, VR HLS IP design, uh, which is shown in the VR IPI integrator. So this uh, IP contains these are uh, five main functions, and you can see the Mars rover has uh, been uh, processed and its edges has been detected on the right corner of the image. So this will be our final IP block design. You can see we have connected various video IPs. Uh, first, we take the uh, video input using uh, DVI to RGB decoder, which converts the video signals and its timing signals into XE format through video into XE4 issue which then passes to the edge detection IP and which again processes and passes to XE stream to video out, which again converts XE data format to video out timing signals. Here we also have video timing control. We're later going to discuss about these specific functions, but in the end, you are going to get a pipeline like this. So uh, let's talk about the specific IPs of our video processing pipeline. Here we have uh, two IPs, DVI to RGB video decoder and RGB to VG out, uh, VGA output. Uh, these two IPs are available from Digiland. We have uh, targeted our video pipeline design for Jiva board. So it contains a video uh, SDMI in-out port and a VGA out port. So DVI to RGB decodes the video stream and outputs 24-bit RGB data. It takes the input SDMI in signal. DVI to RGB video IP also recovers pixel clock and synchronization signals from TMDS signal. And another RGB to VGA outputs to the VGA deck that is available on the board and it accepts uh, from uh, XE to video out IP and outputs uh, to the video deck. Next, we have some three IPs video into XC4 stream, video timing controller, XC4 stream to video out. So these three IPs are available from Xilinx uh, with a Vivado license. Uh, first video into XC4 stream converts input video signal into XC4 stream format. And uh, XC4 stream to video out converts XC4 stream data into video signals. These video signals contains video data, video sync, and blanks. So we have to uh, synchronize the input and output video timing signals. For that, we're going to use video timing control, which can, which can both detect uh, the incoming uh, video signals timing and also generate uh, the timing uh, required by the video output. So each uh, resolutions uh, requires a different timing signal. 
we can set those in our video timing controller IP uh, for our desired resolution and it will generate us the uh, required timing signals for that specific resolutions. Both video in and video out course uh, work with uh, VTC to synchronize the video signals. And next, uh, we're going to talk about TPZ and VDMA for computer vision application. TPZ is a test pattern generator. It is usually used to uh, test our video systems uh, to see if uh, it works well or not. It can also be used to test the video systems and debug them. And one of the prominent features of a uh, video test pattern generator is uh, it can be so programmed uh, using STK and we can generate up to 20 different patterns. And uh, video test pattern generator can be configured to have slave uh, XC4 stream interface, which can be used to overlay on incoming video input also. Next, we have VDMA, that is Video Direct Memory Access IP. So it is used when we require high bandwidth memory access for our video processing pipeline. Uh, whenever we require uh, to process uh, heavy algorithms, uh, many uh, video IPs in a single design, then the internal uh, block RAMs or distributed RAMs of FPGA is not sufficient to uh, temporarily store our image buffers. For that, we require to access uh, the DDR memory that is external in a FPGA board. We can also use uh, DMA, but VDMA is more suitable as it is targeted specifically for video processing applications. It can be configured to write or read to memory and can also be configured to read and write at once in a single IP. It's another feature is uh, Genlock synchronization, which helps to synchronize between read and write of the frames in frame buffer of the DDR memory. VDMA can also work in uh, different clock domains. Uh, it has uh, it can work uh, in a different clock for XE light and different clock for um, XE stream to memory map. It can support up to 32 frame buffers, which is uh, enough for any kind of uh, video processing applications. So when we integrate uh, test pattern and VDMA, uh, we can get a final uh, video processing pipeline like this. Here we use a Zinc processing system uh, to configure VDMA and a test pattern generator. Both of these are required to be programmed using SDK. And uh, we can program which pattern to generate, uh, video signals uh, timing also. Uh, we can uh, also set the size of our image and video. And uh, VDMA, we have to uh, give the address of our external DDR memory and uh, to make it work in a uh, read mode or write mode. So these are done through the Zinc processing system. Next, we have some SDK programming of uh, test pattern generator. Here you can see uh, there are some codes. So this code is uh, sufficient to run test pattern generator. At the beginning, you have to include the uh, header file of TPZ, and then uh, we initialize a object. Here we have initialized called PTPZ. This is a uh, TPZ object, and another we uh, generate so, a pointer. So let me let me add a few things uh, by up to now. So yes. I think everyone is listening to us. So basically. Uh, for designing the computer vision applications, there are three different uh, like uh, user interface or tools, uh, not exactly the separate tools, that's the same tool, Bundle and Vivaro. So Vivaro have mainly three things. One is Vivaro HLS, where we can write C, C++ algorithm in HLS, and we can convert that C, C++ algorithm into BSGL, very low, or IP exact format, that means IP format, basically, BSGL bail over IP format. So basically this SLS tools, tool allow us to write the algorithms like computer algorithms or applications using uh, different uh, functions, like the OpenCV functions, which are built in function in the SLS library, SLSvideo.h. 
So SLS basically allow us to write the contribution algorithm. So that SLS can export the design in IP format, so which can be imported to another sub tool or sub program called Vivado IP Integrator. So there is one called Vivado SLS, another is called Vivado IP Integrator, and then is uh, there is another tools which is called Vivado SDK. So these three all things are bundled in single package and called Vivado tool. So this is Xilinx Vivado tool. And we only talk about the SLS part in Vivado IP integrator. What we can do is we can integrate our SLS based IP. That means design or block or box with other peripheral blocks. Like you are already familiar with MATLAB based or uh, sorry, Simulink based designs. Actually, Simulink consists of number of blocks or boxes. So you can also create one box or block. So uh, you can create the designer model in the actually the Vivaro design flow is quite is the quite like is the simulink design flow. Uh, thus, uh, Vivaro IP integrator can connect the SLS space block or IP with other peripherals. Like we need to have some input IP like is the GBI to RGB, and we can get the RGB value, and we can we, we can convert that RGB into the streaming format. Or streaming into video format, then we can process it, then we can again convert into uh, vice versa options like the uh, RGB into DBA, then we can export to the corresponding ports. Basically, our algorithm need to implement on FPGA device or any hardware or any type of chip. So that IC or chip or FPGA device need to configure with the constraint file. So we have to give the corresponding constraints or pin locations. Uh, where we can take the inputs and where we are going to send the output. So these all things are incorporated in the Vivaro IP integrator. And SLS just give the IP, IP integrator integrates all the things and another part is SDK. Actually not every program or design need the SDK applications while utilizing the G processing system. Actually that is the ARM Cortex A9 processor. So you, your smartphone also have like uh, ARM processor. So that Jink processing system consists of ARM Cortex dual core. So that ARM Cortex need to be programmed with high level language. That means the C or other high level languages. So for programming that processing system, if we have designed with processing system on Vivaro IP integrator, we need to write the program on SDK. That means like the Eclipse SDK or other SDK you are familiar with. So SDK compiles the like high level applications or codes and it creates the executable file like is the uh, uh, ELF file actually we, we call ELF file in Vivaro SDK so we can run that ELF file on the processor of FEG chip. So basically uh, there are uh, three different things we are talking about. Uh, we hope you are getting some information here and if you have any queries you can also uh, type on the questions. Uh, of your right hand side panel session. So we are actually here to address those questions and we are getting few questions. And other than we'll continue on the SDK programming, actually this SDK programming TPG uh, content or PowerPoint actually show up how to write the applications while we have Jing processing system along with TPG, test pattern generator and HLS IP. So there are three major things aside of other connecting IPs. So we already saw, see the block design and Avizan can also back to the block design and we can see all the things. And this is the block design and you can see the uh, TPG IP there. Actually each block is called the IP. So uh, one of our attendees asked about what, what does the IP means. So basically IP is the block, like is the simulink block. Here we call these blocks as IP. These IPs are written in VRGL, Verilog, or high level languages like high level synthesis based languages, C, C, or OpenCL. So in this block design, we can see Jink processing system, test pattern generator, and other connecting IPs like we have RGB to BG, we have DBI to RGB, and uh, actually, we don't have DBA to RGB because we have this pattern generator. So we just take the uh, we, we just create the patterns of 
uh, frames or, or the images from this pattern generator that is given to the XE video direct memory axis. So that is the BDME. So that BDME actually uh, process, uh, that BDME actually process uh, and frames, uh, it, it collects the frames. So we can transport that frames to the uh, output ports. That means the AXI stream to video out, then we can send to RSB to PJ. So this is a very basic uh, layout of block design. Actually, this block design uh, consists of zinc processing system. So we need to write the application on VBAR uh, SDK. So we then will continue on the session. And if you have any queries, we will answer those queries. And uh, we will also send those queries and such in your email too. And let's continue from Abhidhan. Yes, sir. So like source said, uh, this is the block diagram containing zinc processing system. And whenever we include zinc processing system, we have to uh, configure the uh, system using uh, SDK. SDK will uh, program our hardware to run. It contains uh, the drivers uh, for the standalone OS, which is a, just a bare bone OS required to uh, bring up our hardware system. So this is the program for to specifically uh, bring up the test pattern generator. Like I was saying, uh, first we have to create a TPG object. Then we have to create a pointer for uh, to store the configuration for our test pattern generator. And then we uh, uh, val give value to our configuration pointer using a TPG lookup config uh, function. So this function will take the parameter uh, the device ID of the TPG. Each IP has a device ID number associated with it. You can see about that in a, a file called X parameters, uh, which will be uh, loaded in the SDK when you launch it from the Vivado interface. Then we initialize the TPG configurations. It takes the uh, parameters, uh, the pointer to uh, address of the object of uh, TPG. TPG configuration and the base address. And then we uh, uh, give the height, width, and status also uh, for the video that we are generating. Uh, we need height of that video that we have given here 1080, width 1920. And this height and width has been set, and its value are given to the variables height and width. Then we set the color format for our TPG generation which we have given here X, B, C, CSF, RGB. This basically means it gives RGB format. Then we have to set the motion speed, the speed at which the pattern will be generated. And uh, then we have to set the background ID. Here we have set the zone plate. Uh, it is one of the patterns that are available in uh, TPZ. You can see uh, up to different uh, 20 uh, different patterns in TPZ. This is available in uh, uh, this uh, XV TPG header file. When you open this file, you can see there uh, all the names of available patterns. When we have set the pattern, uh, we can also check uh, the uh, ID of this uh, pattern using get background ID function. Then we can uh, enable auto restart uh, the TPG in case it stops. And finally, we use function XV TPG start to start our test parent generator. So this is the, the basic uh, TPG uh, program, which when we implement, will uh, bring up the display with the pattern that we have set. Next, uh, we're going to look into an example uh, program of uh, video direct memory access. Uh, this uh, example is already available in SDK. Uh, to run this uh, example, you need to include VTMA underscore api dot c file into the sources of sdk you can file uh, find this example uh, file inside the ins installation directory uh, under these directories where you can find xcbdma examples so let's look into this example we are going to include the vdma header file then we initialized run triple frame buffer function so here we have implemented triple frame buffer mode of VDMA. So what triple frame buffer mode means is uh, VDMA will uh, allocate three frame buffers in the DDR memory. So when uh, first the video processing pipeline starts, the first frame buffer is completely filled. Then it will start to fill the second frame buffer. And when the second frame buffer has been completely filled, uh, the first frame buffer 
will uh, output to the display and third frame buffer will start to fill and uh, when the first frame buffer has been outputted to the display uh, the second frame buffer will output to the uh, display and the first frame buffer will again start to fill up in this way uh, these three frame buffers will cycle the read and write process of the uh, video data into the ddr memory so that there will be no tearing occurring in the uh, video output so here uh, inside the main program we have just created a vdma object called instance pointer and then we have called the run triple frame buffer uh, function it takes uh, around six uh, or seven arguments uh, depending on what you want to use first we uh, give the address of the vdma object that we just created and then this zero it is the device id of the vdma like I said before, each IP has its own device ID. You can find about it in X parameters file in the SDK. Then we have declared width of 1920, height 1080, and then source buffer. So source buffer, the source buffer is the address of the DDR memory from where you're going to uh, start writing. This source buffer address uh, is also uh, found in the X parameters. You can set it in the address editor of Vivado IP integrator. And then uh, these are just some uh, status we have checked. If uh, the VDM is initialized, we'll get an output called transfer of frames uh, started. If uh, it does not initiate, we get transfer of frames failed. So this was uh, basic uh, SDK programming of VDM. And when we finally put together uh, the block diagram, it, you can see here we have uh, also done a tested video pipeline design of video encryption here we have used a test pattern generator with vdma and uh, before here are two newer blocks uh, for aes encryption and aes decryption uh, we can also uh, create uh, created this uh, hls ip for encryption you can also create uh, different ips uh, according to your requirement and when we keep it uh, in between uh, our video processing pipeline, uh, we can easily get the results. So let's talk about a uh, little about optimization methodology. In uh, Bivaro HLS, there are different pragma directives uh, for us, uh, which will help us to optimize our IP performance more further. First, we have pipeline directive, uh, which helps us to run our uh, uh, functions in a uh, concurrent manner and in parallel. Then we have data flow. This enables tax level pipelining, allowing our functions and loops to execute concurrently. Then we have a resource, array partition, dependence, inline. These are some of the other uh, pragma directives. Uh, you can see here inline uh, inlines the functions, which will decrease the overhead of calling the functions from uh, different places in the code. Then we have another on-roll directive. So on-roll directive is uh, one of uh, the important ones which will help us to on-roll the loops. What it does is if we have a loop running uh, four times, then usually uh, loops in uh, C or C++ language runs sequentially. Using this on-roll pragma directive, we can separate those uh, loops. For example, if we have a loop running four times, then we can run those four sequences of uh, loop at once in a single clock cycle. That is, four. it will not run uh, after completing one instant of a loop and then start second, but it will start all those four instances of loop at once. This greatly increases uh, our hardware parallelism and speed up the uh, uh, process. Another pragma directive is loop pattern. It allows nested loops to be collapsed into a single loop. This will remove the transition overhead from the external uh, loop to the internal loop, improving our latency. We also have loop uh, merge pragma directive. Uh, this uh, merges uh, consecutive different loops into a, uh, making them share the same resources in the FPGA. As we know, FPGA has a limited resources. So we have to be careful designing our system, how much resource we're going to use. And uh, using these pragma directives, we can control uh, our C, C++ design uh, up to the hardware level. 
So after this, uh, we had a, a design process of using Vivardo HLS, exporting it to the Vivardo IP integrator, synthesizing and running in uh, after Vivardo to the SDK programming. So this was a tedious process. We also have another high level a complete design tool called SDSOC, uh, which has a top interface as HLS and allows us to program in C and C++. This complete design tool is targeted towards Zinc and Zinc MPSOC platform. Traditional Zinc design flow with the Vivardo and SDK is difficult and sometimes lengthy, as you saw. First, we design in Vivardo HLS, then export to Vivardo IP integrator, and then after synthesizing, we again go back to SDK for programming the Zinc processor. So all these are mixed and uh, given as a complete uh, single tool in the SDSOC. SDSOC can also be used by FPG developer to write C, C++ algorithm without uh, previous knowledge of this uh, Vivado design flow. So it's just a basic uh, brief introduction to SDSOC so you can further explore about it yourself so this was uh, up to now for the computer vision applications. Hope all you enjoyed this session. Now regarding machine learning with Jalinx FPG, I want to hand over to Krishna Sar again. Thank you. So Krishna Sar will uh, start uh, the machine learning with Jalinx FPG. Basically this machine learning with Jalinx FPG contains uh, for we are on platform. So, so we have this uh, content uh, for implementing machine learning algorithms on FPG. First of all, we have the Pink development platform. So this Pink development platform is actually based on Pink FPG board. So Pink is the uh, open source FPG development board. So basically Pink stands of Python plus Zinc. So this Pink development board or FPGA board allows us to write the applications on Python along with BSGL and Verilog. So one method is Pink development pattern. Another is using the revision stack. Actually, there is a revision stack uh, libraries for machine learning and which is available with SD associate development tool. And another is machine learning with DeFi development platform. Actually, uh, Xilinx have acquired the DeFi. DeFi is the uh, machine learning and AI company for drones and other platforms based on Beijing. So DeFi also have some development platform for machine learning. So this is the third option. And the fourth option of implementing machine learning on FEG is ML Suite. So ML Suite is machine learning suite from Xilinx. So this ML Suite based on are implemented on XDNN architecture. Actually, this is the specific type of architecture. And this supports some high-end FPGA boards. So I'm talking about high-end FPGA boards. There is BCU1525, another is Albio. These two type of FPGA boards are available on Amazon F1 instance. Actually, Amazon hosts the server architecture and they also have FPGA-based server architecture. So they also, uh, provide lease service of F1 instances, which is based on VC1525. And there is another uh, vendor or third party, which is called Nimix. So they also provide the uh, server based uh, architecture for uh, implementing um, machine learning applications along with other uh, like high end applications. So uh, we can start with Pink Development Platform. So I will talk about the Pink. So it is a Python plus Zinc. So Pink uh, board is a low cost FPGA board. It allows us to write the application on Python as well as the BSGL Verilog. And we can talk is like Pink have two parts. One is, one is front end, another is back end. So in the back end, there will have the Vivaro design flow as we talked before. So Vivaro have some IP integration type of design flow. And in the front end, we will have the Python ap applications. So Python applications is mainly run on the processor. 
and the back-end part that is the Vivado based, IP based, BSGL based or Verilog based design is run on the back-end. So BSGL, Verilog in back-end, Python in front-end. So this is the main generic way of development with Python and it actually allows to implement the machine learning applications because Python supports lots of machine learning uh, algorithms and frameworks and models and here are some examples you can see the BNN implementation binarized neural network implementation for like object detection and QNN for recognition CNN for uh, classification type application and other applications are also there in ping.io so you can also visit the ping.io actually this FPJ platform or board is open source so uh, there are very few open source FPGA platforms. Actually, FPGA is quite vendor specific. There are main two vendors, Xilinx and Intel Altera. So, Pink is open source. So, this is the one method of implementing ML or machine learning applications on FPGA. So, another option is we are talk on the revision stack. So, let's go to revision stack. So, we we talk about the as the SOC tool in the previous slide, or we don't just have swap the small brief and revision stack is the like bundle bundle of uh, applications and APIs, so it can be utilized for implementing machine learning applications along with computer vision application on FPGA that is Xilinx FPGA. So this revision stack mainly supports. Uh, ultra scale plus type of FPGA, which is also called it the MPSOC, MPSOC. So uh, you can also get the revision stack based information on the GitHub link, which we have in the right hand side. And on talking about revision stack with machine learning, there are some pre built uh, like models of uh, machine learning networks or, or the neural networks, basically. Like there is CNN network which is already built on so it can directly uh, like implement it and utilize for inferencing so we can utilize the built-in model for inferencing on the FVG that is MP SOC type of FVG MP SOC stands for uh, multi-processing system on chip so uh, Jink have SOC type and MP SOC type there are some system on chip and there are some Processing system on chip type. So, this MPSOC provides the implementation of machine learning algorithms and neural net, uh, basically, neural networks on the FPGA. So, this is the main ideology of this revision stack. And you can also get more about the revision stack from Chiling. So, another is we have the DEFI. So, we already talked about DEFI, and DEFI is actually uh, based upon the uh, SDK. They have, they have the deep neural network development kit or development STK tool. So it can be utilized for implementing like TensorFlow, CAFE or MXNet. So these algorithms are like the frameworks uh, can be utilized for implementing different type of space recognition and some other like uh, face recognition type of application on uh, FPGA platform. So DEFI is the uh, company which is acquired by Xilinx in 2018. So they have few platforms they also have own hardware architecture and basically Xilinx FPG also uh, supports Xilinx uh, FPG supports the uh, DeFi platform DeFi neural network development kit so it can be utilized for programming the uh, FPG Xilinx FPG so these are the three different methods and one remaining is the ML suite so ML suite is basically utilized for high performance uh, machine learning applications actually uh, this uh, platform is utilized for high in FEG boards like the C1525 all the view actually these are heavy uh, heavily uh, expensive like is the VC1525 cost like um, even three thousand plus three thousand dollar plus and all view cost five thousand dollar plus actually all view have three different series all view 200 250 and 280 so there are two variants currently available in the market and this uh, ml suite actually supports cafe tensorflow keras mxnet and darknet so these are the frameworks which already available with ml suite so these frameworks can be utilized with the architecture which is represented in right hand side 
So this architecture shows that the XDNN engine is in the base, base or foundation, which is actually attached or what is implemented on the FEG chip. So on the overlay of that XDNN architecture, there is CAFE, MXNet, and TensorFlow. So this uh, open source frameworks can be utilized for implementing machine learning. So we have uh, utilized the uh, uh, MXNet and the YOLO architecture for uh, object detection uh, with BC1525. Actually, we have harnessed this uh, competent, uh, 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 the power or, or the computing power on the Nimix cloud. So Amazon Web Service also was the cloud service of F1 instances. So we can also implement this type of machine learning applications on F1 instances. So this is the very short uh, and uh, uh, brief information about how we can implement machine learning applications on FPG. Actually, FPG are uh, quite uh, 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 getting more interest in 2018 and uh, first quarter of 2019 because FPG are going to be like uh, much more heterogeneous type of chips or ICs. So it consists of AI engine, basically the latest FPG, which are going to uh, launch on 2019 mid. So they will have like artificial intelligence based engines. Uh, so they can run the AI based algorithms more easily and more uh, power efficient way. And other is uh, they, they consist of different processing engines uh, like uh, high speed interfaces. So we can do the real time operations or real time jobs or applications. So it provides much more flexibility than the GPU, graphic processing unit and uh, CPUs. So uh, these are dominating the uh, machine learning part also and the main mentor like Xilinx is focusing on how to make their company, that means Xilinx to the AI field. So they are now uh, seems to be competing with NVIDIA. Actually NVIDIA, NVIDIA is the uh, power for the GPUs. So they are uh, like competing with NVIDIA, uh, with GPU. So FPG and GPU are going to be uh, much more computing platform for implementing machine learning. So this is the uh, very basic and overview sessions. So uh, you can have a number of queries and you can ask those queries to us. Actually, we will answer those queries in your email too. And we'll also send you the uh, overall recording of this situation on your email. So these are the differences for computer vision applications, which Avidan have presented. Actually, uh, we don't need to worry much about what what the like uh, SLS is, what the Pivaro is, what the SDK is. Just uh, take it quite easily. Actually, uh, we also have few uh, online course sessions, and you can also write your email to us. So we we select the eligible applicants or, or the request, and we provide free access of our online courses. So those courses also explain much more about the comprehension. And on the machine learning part, so these are the references which we have taken on. Actually, there are some white paper from Xilinx. So it's, I started in the beginning. So we are mainly focusing on the Xilinx part while, while there is another vendor called Intel Altera. So Intel Altera also have the SDK for machine learning and deep learning applications so Altera are mainly focused on open CL languages so open CL language can be utilized for implementing machine learning algorithms on Altera FPG and Altera FPG have own set of different families like the Xilinx have MP SOC, SOC and Ultra Scale Asocra Altera have own family so they have the similar computing devices or FPG chips so we can also do similar things on Altera FPG while we, while we know about the Xilinx. So guys, uh, this is all the overall session. And we will answer uh, the questions, uh, remaining questions for a few minutes more. And this session is planned for the 50 minute session. And this is all the information which we have planned to share with you guys. And if you have uh, any further more queries, you can email to us, it's Peter. Uh, we also have few online courses on FVG development. So, uh, we, we, select the uh, some enthusiasm and uh, enthusiastic requests. So we provide free accesses to the uh, online courses on Udemy. So basically,
that is on Udemy. And you can also uh, visit our website logiclonics.com or digitronicsnepal.com. So those websites also consist of different blogs and posts. So you can also surf from there and you can also even Google. So there are lots of information available in the Google. And uh, meet you in the next plan session, which is hardware debugging with FPGA. And I would like to thank uh, Abidan for, for the computer vision session. And this is all in the plan uh, today's uh, session. Uh, so guys, thank you for your participation. And we hope you uh, to join on the next session also. And we will answer your queries uh, on upcoming uh, five minutes. So thanks, thanks for your time. Meet you in next session.